will be a quarterfinalist, it would seem. Only 13 minutes remain in the overall match clock. And with the score, a seven-point lead for Magnus, he would have to lose every game and yep. lose some pretty quickly for Vidit exactly. to be able to mount a comeback. It's mathematically possible. Magnus is certainly not planning to take his foot off the gas pedal. Moreover, he his openings are becoming more and more combative as he trots out a Benoni. Benoni, one of the best bullet openings because it's so easy to play. There's so many tactical ideas. And the main idea, of course, is to prepare B6, B5. But you always have to watch out for the health of your D6 pawn. This is the main drawback, Robert, of the Benoni, this major, major long-term weakness on D6. That's 100% the case, and that's why Black first put a rook to D8 to protect the pawn. Now the queen's over on B7. B5 is next. So Vidit went G4. That might expose his king. I don't see what's next for that G pawn, and I clearly see what Magnus has in store for Vidit. Man, and once these pawns start to roll, it's like a roller coaster going down the hill. There is nothing in this world that can stop those pawns from steamrolling white on the queen side. You're going to see Magnus soon enough, I think, pushing c4, creating a little envelope for his knight on c5. He knows all of these ideas down pat, and he's got 56 seconds on his clock as he's doing that. More than double Vidit's time, an easier position to play for Black. The A file open and now under Black's control. And C3, anybody? With B4 next, give me a protected Ooh. pass pawn. Mm -mm -mm. C3, Vidit saying, no, 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 you are not going to support that passer. Unfortunately for White, that bishop is plenty uh, to support C3 safely. And now Magnus is going after that pawn on B4 with everything that he's got. Is he really going to put his rook on C4? Oh, oh no. My gosh. Oh, no. <laughs> that is sad for white. You just can't protect b4. That one little pawn on b5 defends both rooks. If only you could replace the queen on b3 with a pawn. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But what a find by Vidit there. He went rook to a1. And why is this so good for black? Apparently, there's a ridiculous tactic that's never going to happen with knight takes b4. If Magnus plays that move, I leave. Wait, what's the point? Knight takes b4, knight takes... Oh. He played it. I'm leaving. Oh! You queen can't take F2? on C4. No! Bishop C4, queen takes no. F3. And now Bishop D4 sets up the mate threat on G1. He's found that too. And Avidit has to abandon the knight. And that ends the combination. Wow. Queen E3. The queen has only one escape square, and it's enough. Rook B2, and it's over. This was a masterpiece. Like, we were talking about how great some of the other games were. This one, sublime. That would have taken me 30 minutes, and there'd be absolutely no guarantee that I would see that move. Knight takes b4. Are you kidding me? And bishop c4 would have gotten mated like this. Black doesn't even need the knight. Who needs the knights? Who needs anything except Magnus Carlsen's brilliancies? I'm speechless. That was so exceptional to play in that a tactical sequence to deliver a mating attack against Vidis King. Wow, wow, wow.